Hello, everyone. Welcome to Karma Talk, a podcast with yoga studio owners uh, who share their experience with us. My name is Yulia, and I'm so excited. I'm your host, and I'm so excited to present our speaker today, our guest. Her name is April Lam, and she is the owner of Bikram Yoga Walnut Creek in California. And for her mom has been running this studio for 15 years, and then April stepped in five years ago, and she would like to share her experience. Um, and I have a question for you. Yes, sure. Are you ready? Thank you for having me, Julia. Yes, I'm ready. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. So let's begin with this hot question. What mm. does running a yoga studio mean to you at this moment with COVID-19? Oh, at this moment. Yes, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, I think it's a very... It's a, a constantly changing and evolving scene. You know, this, this pandemic era is so, there's so many things up in the air, so many things we don't know, so many firsts and everything. I mean, for us at the current moment, our studio has been closed since um, March 15th. And um, we haven't been able to have any classes, but we have our students, or sorry, our teachers having online classes and stuff like that. We're just trying to keep the community, you know, still interested in the yoga, even though they're unable to come in and practice. And um, it's been interesting to see how involved everyone is individually and independently during this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. And what has been happening? Any, any insights that you had with this? Um, like I said, uh, we're, we're just kind of sitting on the edge of our seats and waiting to open again. You know, we're just rearing to go and excited to kind of get back to some sense of normalcy. Because, I mean, in the studio's history, in the past 15 years, that you know my mom our family has run it the studio is open 365 days a year you know we don't close we're not closed on christmas not new year's not fourth of july we have classes all day every day and then suddenly you know with just a drop of a hat we were forced to forced to close so like i said it's a very new and interesting time and we're just just kind of wait we i feel very stagnant we're just waiting for something to happen and kind of waiting to get started again and i find that a lot of our students feel the same way just eager to get back to practice i see yeah i, I know it, it it did happen kind of so fast and it was a shock yeah I think, for know, everybody all the studios around us the same while when it just started first to happen we were all running, we were all had our regular schedules as normal. And then, you know, a week before we closed, I remember it's March 15th or March 16th was the last class that we had. Um, I had a discussion with my teachers saying, saying, hey, you know, so there's this global pandemic going on and I'm hearing that a lot of studios and businesses, uh, all sorts of things are closing. How do you guys feel about this? And it was very split. Some teachers were like, you know, it doesn't matter. We all need the yoga and people will still come and it's at their own risk and they're aware of the, you know, the benefits and the, and the risks involved. And then I had other teachers that were like, you know, we really gotta, we just gotta close. We gotta take a break and see how it goes. And then when that happened, we all thought that it would only be for like two weeks. We're like, okay, this is fine. We'll close the studio two weeks. It'll be good. We'll do some deep cleaning, you know, tidy up the studio. But we didn't realize that <laughs> now is, is almost June that it would be for so long. So like I said, we're just, waiting on the edge of our seats, yeah. ready to go when we get the green light. Yeah. Well, yeah, it makes sense. I think everybody's waiting. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? And yeah, it's totally at that point now where everyone's like, hey, what's going on now? Seems like everything's all right. You know, it's hard to feel the impact of something if you are not directly affected by it. And I find that for the greater community, they find that they don't, they don't really know anyone that's gotten sick or something. So it's hard for them to imagine the scale of this crisis. So it's hard, you know, to reconcile having to sit back and do nothing when you feel as though everything is fine and normal. Yes. So what I liked about what you said, I really liked your attitude before we started this recording, just when we um, reconnected, um, you mentioned that there is something, there is something to gain from this experience. And I'm a believer that every hardship perhaps has a secret hidden uh, blessing in it. Mm -hmm. So what, what's your thinking on this? Yeah, like I said, it so unplanned. And he, from a view of a studio owner and studio manager and just a regular human being, it's kind of like a I feel as if it's a forced timeout. You know, the planet said, hey, everybody just stop. Yes. We've gone a little too That's far. True. Everything's gone a little bit too crazy. Just got to take a pause, step back and kind of reevaluate everything. Yeah. See how we can move forward in a more sustainable, in a more, you know, in a better way that we will have a longer future. Yeah. And it's crazy, crazy, you know, crazy world where everyone's, trying to get ahead of everybody else and everything is so driven by money and mm -hmm. yeah it's just a, it's a welcome break although although at times it's frustrating and you know this is a source of a lot of anxiety but I mean I find like you said that it, it's for a reason it must be mm -hmm. and in when it comes to running your studio any anything that you've gained from this like any you, i think you mentioned something like making it optimal and um, uh, yes well we're using the KarmaSoft software like like i said this our studio is quite well established it it's been there since 2000 prior to my mom buying it in 2006 and the whole time we've always used KarmaSoft. you know and i remember i looking at the original karma software in a, one of our related studios in one of our sister studios, I could see myself and see that the first time I attended a class in 2003, you know, it's keeping the track so far, yeah. but um, like as we've been using it and my mom, she's quite old. She's in her mid seventies and she's not computer savvy, but it's this easy software has been so, you know, manageable and, you know, able to, for someone who's not computer savvy to use that we've never changed to mind body or whatever, because it just, it works for us. And so now that I've stepped in a few years ago, I've noticed, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's easy. It works. We like it. And then now that we've had a break, I've had a chance to, um, talk with Rudy, you know, and he's shown me how much more the software is capable of doing, you know, it's able, cause now we got to do the online booking in advance. I have to do mostly cashless transactions and this whole software system does everything. It goes f everything that we need from head to toe and I don't have to switch anything and it's just super easy, super happy with it. Great, thank you. Thanks yep. for that. Um, yeah. I just, I don't know if you don't mind me asking, but I got curious about your mom. Uh, what's yeah. her, um, what's her take on doing yoga and practicing yoga and regular uh, yoga classes? Well, she's a extremely diligent yogi. Okay. I guess she's seventy two now, and then up until the day we closed. She was taking class every day. Really? And she teaching wow. class every day. So every day she's maybe in the hot room for three hours. Wow. 
that's incredible. And that's for that's for fifteen years. That's incredible. Yes, I yes. mean, it's. it's so, I mean, when you see her, you don't see somebody who looks that's seventy plus years old. You only know she's seventy plus years old when you ask her about the computer, and then you're like, oh. I see. You don't, <laughs> you don't know how to do that. But I mean, that's all fine yeah. and normal. So it's. Oh, but uh, that's quite something. I mean, I, it, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, she's like a role model to me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yes. I mean, I myself, I know how hard it is to get to the studio, to make yourself to get to class, but it's just become something ingrained in her. And even now after we've been closed, she's still practicing on a daily basis on her own. I mean, that's more than I can say for myself. It's hard to practice on your own. Exactly, yes, definitely. I, I do agree with this and I'm, I'm just fascinated that there are people like this out there in the world and they're yeah. just like, you know, inspiration, so much passion and drive behind everything they're doing like I mean it's just incredible yeah and I'm I'm just grateful we have these kind of people out there <laughs> very inspiring and you can see you know she, she really embodies the the, the benefits that yeah. this yoga practice yeah. brings to brings to a person she's also a very passionate teacher you know she she's been doing it for a very long time and very inspiring yeah, that's amazing. You're lucky. <laughs> yeah, I come from a kind of a family of yoga teachers. My brother is also a Bikram yoga teacher. Uh -huh. So we, we, I'm the last one that became a teacher. <laughs> Actually, I was the one who came, who joined in last. But, you know, never too late, they say. Exactly. Everything happens at the right time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so... My next question, and maybe it's my last question. We'll mm -hmm. see how, how the time goes. Um, mm -hmm. What's your vision of in-person yoga in a post-pandemic world? Yeah, this is a good question. This is what a lot of us have been trying to imagine and realize. Yeah. And I believe, I mean, I've seen this, a lot of studios, not here where I am in California, but I have friends in Texas and, uh, you know, somewhere on the East Coast that they've just opened probably for about a week now. And what they are telling me is that they're operating at, you know, at a lesser capacity, you know, about 25% of what yeah. they are supposed to, or they're able to accommodate. Um, like I said, uh, touchless transactions. So all classes need to be pre-booked online, uh, you know, in order to reserve your space and all of that stuff and all the transactions happening online as well. So, you know, people can just show up, yep. go and do the yoga and then, you know, just keep it as <laughs> touchless as possible. I've also heard crazy things like, you know, uh, putting up partitions inside the hot room you know when you go to the supermarket and they got that plastic thing in yes. front of you i've heard people talking about putting those in the hot room or practicing with your mask on I'm, i mean i'm not so keen on these things it's a little bit far-fetched to me i think that i'm hopeful that we will return to a more to more of what we were used to, to you know it's not going to be so different than what we had before. I think that initially it, it, we will have to follow all these new guidelines. And again, I think it's just depending, dependent on where you are, kind of a region or local county, county rules. But um, after that, I'm hopeful that things will return back to normal. I'm not sure if we'll ever be, you know, packed like 400 people in a room, body sardines sweating on each other, but yeah. you, you never know. That's true. Yeah. Well, it's, to me, it's a bit of a mystery when it comes to math. So you, I is think you're more experienced. Could you tell me, is it even possible to do <laughs> yoga with a mask on? <laughs> That's a good one. Well, okay, so, the first exercise that we do is a breathing exercise and you know you inhale deep you through your nose and then you exhale through your mouth <sighs> really you know mouth wide you really project so i've heard people saying that 
to wear the mask over the mouth uh -huh. during this breathing exercise. Same with at the end of the series, you, you do a breathing exercise that is quick exhalations through the mouth. Mm -hmm. So again, they said to just put the mask on the mouth, over the mouth to do that exercise as well. I mean, throughout the 90 minute series, we're meant to be breathing only through the nose. Oh, so, so that makes you know, sense. Kind of. Yeah. But like with anything, something covering your face is really going to affect your oxygen intake, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, even children when they go to PE in school, I think that they found children that they've, have, if they have to wear a mask, it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not getting enough oxygen mm -hmm. yeah. that their body needs for the activity that they're doing. And the same for the yoga, you know, you can't have something covering your mouth, co sorry, covering your nose when you're trying to breathe. <laughs> so I just, I think that it's, it, it's put there to make everyone to try to feel more comfortable, but I, I don't, I don't know if it will be necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or really that effective. Okay. I, I like how positive you are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking forward. Yeah. You know, like I said, I'm very hopeful and I don't optimistic. I, I think that things will be all right. Great. So yeah. before we end, any plans for reopening? We're ready. Everything's ready to go. We, um, during this time of closure, like initially when it happened, we thought when we closed the studio, we're like, oh, it's just going to be uh, two weeks and then everything back to normal. So we were kind of really quickly doing things and cleaning up and painting the walls and, you know, everything. And now it's been long enough. We're really ready to go, you know. <laughs> So once we in our county get the green light to open our studio, we're, we're going to start classes right away. Maybe again, like at a limited capacity and maybe with a, a smaller schedule than we had initially, but it will be like soft opening and we're going to test the waters and then hopefully get back to a more regular kind of a schedule. Excellent. Sounds like a perfect plan. Thank I'm you. so excited for you. Thank you. And let's wrap up for today. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for your attention. Um, thanks and for, to you, April. Thank you so much for being here with Karma Talk. Yeah, thank and, you. Yeah. And for everybody else, until next time, take care. <laughs> Goodbye.